Hi, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us. We're going to be getting started in just a little bit. My name is Raven Garris, and I'm the Community Manager for the Better Medicare Alliance. Again, thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon, and we're going to be getting started in just a little bit. Hi, everybody. My name is Raven Garris, and I'm the Community Manager at Better Medicare Alliance. Thank you all so much for joining us for our first telephone town hall. I know I've been interacting with many of you over Facebook and through email, and I'm really glad that so many of you guys were able to join us today. Um, to begin, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. If you are logged into the Facebook page to view the live stream of the telephone town hall, Please be sure to mute your computers or your tablet so that the audio from the phone line and the audio from the computer or tablet won't conflict with one another. Again, thank you all so much for joining. Um, throughout the town hall, we will remind you to press zero if you have a question. We will begin answering questions after we have covered the majority of the topics, but we will be taking some questions in between topics as well. The topics we'll be covering this afternoon are open enrollment, the differences between Medicare Advantage and traditional Medicare, an election report on what the presidential candidates are saying about Medicare Advantage, the reasons that Medicare Advantage needs to be protected, and what seniors can do to help us protect and strengthen Medicare Advantage. And again, the Q&A segment will be at the end, but we'll also be taking a couple of questions between topics. So just to provide a quick introduction on BMA, we are the leading nonprofit advocacy coalition advocating for Medicare Advantage. We have over 100,000 Medicare Advantage beneficiaries in our coalition, as well as more than 70 ally organizations, which include nurses, doctors, plans, and employers. So the next topic we're going to address is open enrollment. I expect many of you have received materials in the mail on Medicare and Medicare health plans, and we want to make sure that you guys understand all of your options during open enrollment. If you have any questions about what we cover, please remember to press zero so that we can answer your questions live. So open enrollment occurs each year from October 15th through December 7th. During open enrollment, there are roughly six important changes that you can make to your Medicare coverage, and I'll go through those changes now. Number one, if you are enrolled in a traditional Medicare plan, you can switch to a Medicare Advantage plan during open enrollment. Number two, if you are already in a Medicare Advantage plan and would like to switch back to traditional Medicare, you can do that during open enrollment as well. Number three, you can also switch from one Medicare Advantage plan to another. For example, you can switch from a Medicare Advantage plan without prescription drug coverage to a Medicare Advantage plan that does have prescription drug coverage and vice versa. Number four, you can choose to join a Medicare Part D plan to cover your prescription drugs. Number five, if you are already enrolled in a Medicare Part D plan, you can switch to a different Medicare Part D plan during open enrollment. And finally, number six, you can decide to drop your Medicare Part D coverage completely during open enrollment. Again, if you have any questions about any of that, please press zero to be connected with one of our screeners to ask your questions. Now, many of you may already be enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan and you like your plan the way it is, you don't wanna make any changes. If that's the case for you, you don't have to do anything during open enrollment. However, it is important to remember that things like benefits, provider networks, and premiums may change each year. So we, we recommend that you take the time to research the plan types available in your area to make sure your current plan is still, in fact, the best option for you. If you have questions about plan types and what plans will work best for you or what plans are available in your area, there are several resources available to help you compare and contrast Medicare Advantage plan. One resource is the Medicare in You Handbook that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services sends out each year, and it has information on traditional Medicare, Medicare Advantage, Medicare Part D, Medigap, and also other Medicare health plans. Also, you can search for information on Medicare.gov. 
Um, when you go into their site, you can search for a specific plan type, and Medicare.gov will pull up a list of resources on that plan. Another popular tool on Medicare.gov is called the Plan Finder tool. And basically, you enter your zip code, and the system creates a chart of all of the plans that are available in your area, and even gives you information on premiums and deductibles. Other resources include Medicare counselors, which are available through programs like State Health Insurance Assistance Programs, also known as SHIP, where someone will work with you one-on-one -on -one to discuss your options. And then the Medicare Rights Center has a helpline that you can call and speak to someone about your very specific challenges you may be having with your current health care plan. An important thing to remember during open enrollment is that you must already be enrolled in Medicare Parts A and B to participate. You can get your Part A and B benefits from either traditional Medicare or from a Medicare Advantage plan, but the important thing to remember during open enrollment is that you must already have Part A and B benefits. If you did not enroll in a traditional Medicare plan when you were first eligible to enroll, you may enroll in traditional Medicare between January 1st and March 31st, but please be aware you may face a late penalty. Again, if you are not already enrolled in traditional Medicare, you may not enroll during open enrollment, which starts this Saturday. You may enroll in a traditional Medicare plan between January 1st and March 31st. If you are already enrolled in Medicare Parts A and B and have never enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan before and would like to do so, you may enroll between April 1st and June 30th. You may also join a Medicare Part D plan between April 1st and June 30th. Again, if you have never enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan before, you may do so between April 1st and June 30th. So just to clarify, you can participate in open enrollment, which begins this Saturday, October 15th, and ends on December 7th, if you are already enrolled in a Medicare Advantage or Medicare Part D plan and you wish to make changes to your coverage. I know that was a lot of information, so please press zero if you have a question, and we will take our first question live in just a few moments. So we have a question from Sally Alter of Terryville, Texas, who wants to know more about the benefits of Medicare Advantage versus traditional Medicare. From Sally Alter of Terryville, Texas, uh, who wants to know the benefits of Medicare Advantage versus traditional Medicare. Hi, Sally. Thank you so much for your question, and it's actually great that you asked that. Our next topic will actually be on the differences between Medicare Advantage and traditional Medicare. If I do not answer your particular question during that topic, please press zero again, and we will get to you. Okay, so that brings us to our very first poll question of the afternoon. You guys may participate in the poll by simply using your telephone keypad. Okay, our first question is, was the option of enrolling in Medicare Advantage made clear to you? Press 1 for yes, I received materials or counseling on my enrollment options, including Medicare Advantage. Press 2 for no, I was not told about Medicare Advantage, nor did I receive any materials about Medicare Advantage. Press 3 for I was automatically enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan. And again, I will repeat. Was the option of enrolling in Medicare Advantage made clear to you? Press 1 for yes, I received materials or counseling on my enrollment options, including Medicare Advantage. Press 2 for no, I was not told about Medicare Advantage, nor did I receive any materials about Medicare Advantage. Press 3 for I was automatically enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan. Okay, so thank you so much for completing the poll. It looks like we had lots of you participate. Again, thank you so much for participating in the poll. So next we're going to give an overview on the differences between Medicare Advantage and traditional Medicare. 
Medicare Advantage is sometimes referred to as Medicare Part C and is the option within Medicare that allows you to receive your Part A and B benefits through private companies. If you join a Medicare Advantage plan, you still have Medicare. You just receive your Part A and B benefits through the Medicare Advantage plan instead of through t traditional Medicare. Traditional Medicare includes Part A, which is hospital, and Part B, medical coverage, if you choose to enroll in both. Most people pay monthly income-based premiums for Medicare Part B. You must pay this premium whether you have traditional Medicare or Medicare Advantage. Traditional Medicare does not cover vision, hearing, and dental benefits, which are covered by the majority of Medicare Advantage plans. In fact, Medicare Advantage plans cover um, at least one of these options 97% of the time, and over half of Medicare Advantage plans cover all three vision, hearing, and dental benefits. Under Medicare Advantage, there is a limit on the amount of out-of-pocket costs you pay for health care each year. This out-of-pocket spending limit does not exist under traditional Medicare. Under traditional Medicare, you may go to any doctor or hospital in the United States that accepts Medicare. Under Medicare Advantage, the providers you can visit depend on the type of plan you select. This is referred to as the provider network, and plans offer information on which providers you may go to based on the plan type you select. If you have traditional Medicare, you may also choose to purchase a supplemental insurance policy called Medigap to cover out-of-pocket physician costs. If you have Medicare Advantage, you cannot enroll in Medigap, and this is because the Medicare Advantage plan typically covers the services that Medigap covers. If you have any questions about any of that, please press zero. To learn more about traditional Medicare, Medicare Advantage, and Medigap, please visit Medicare.gov or call 1-800-MEDICARE to speak to a representative. So we would like to give an update on the poll, um, which was, was the option of enrolling in Medicare Advantage made clear to you when you enrolled? 71 of you said, yes, I received materials or counseling on my enrollment option. 39 of you said, no, I was not told about Medicare Advantage, nor did I receive materials or counseling on my enrollment option. Um, and 13 of you said, I was automatically enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan. And at this time, I think we can take a question from Richard Beardsley from Ellington, Florida. Yeah, so I wanted to know, um, what, how do you know when you have an Advantage plan? Hi, Richard. Thank you for your question. Um, we do understand that some Medicare Advantage plans make it difficult to tell whether or not you are actually in an Advantage plan. Um, the best advice I would give to you would be to call the phone number that's located on the back of your insurance card, speak to um, a representative, and ask them if this qualifies as a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, and then we'll, we'll take one more question from um, Lyle Sanders of Canvas, Washington. Lyle? Can you hear us, Lyle? Okay. I don't think Lyle can hear us. So uh, keep pressing zero if you'd like to ask a question, and we're going to move forward with our town hall. Okay. Our next two topics will be covered by our president and CEO, Congresswoman Allison Short. First, she's going to give us an election report and inform us of what the presidential candidates are saying about Medicare Advantage. Well, uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, this is Congresswoman Allison Schwartz. I'm delighted to be president and CEO of Better Medicare Alliance, a uh, national coalition that advocates for, uh, for Medicare Advantage and to have so many of you on the line from across the country uh, who are participating in 
uh, in Medicare, and the part of Medicare that we talk about mostly, speak about mostly, and advocate for is Medicare Advantage. Uh, we're excited about this option being available to so many uh, of our seniors and those who are eligible for, for Medicare, and uh, I want to hear from you both on this call and, of course, you can always hear, you be in touch with us in, in other ways as well. Some of you are on Facebook as well, which is great. So um, I can give you a little bit of an update on uh, what the presidential nominees are, uh, are saying about uh, Medicare Advantage, which is not so much, I have to say. There is not as much discussion about health care or about Medicare as you might think, uh, certainly given how important it is to actually every American senior and their families. Uh, when they've been asked about Medicare, uh, both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton say they like Medicare and they're going to protect Medicare. Uh, we don't exactly know what that means uh, in, uh, at all, although uh, we as you probably can guess, Hillary Clinton has some pretty detailed policy uh, information on her website, and you can uh, look at that. Uh, but what we did want to make a, a particular point for you is that a change in an administration does mean potential changes around Medicare and Medicare Advantage. And in the next four to eight years, we're going to see uh, many more seniors uh, come online, turning 10,000 more, turning 65 every day. Uh, that puts certain financial pressures on the federal government. Um, and there is increasing conversation about how important it is to get the right kind of health care for seniors today, many of whom are living uh, well with multiple chronic conditions and whether, in fact, Medicare is uh, delivering care in the very best way uh, to pr provide those kind of um, you know, opportunities to make sure that you get the care that you need. And that's why we care about Medicare Advantage. We think that Medicare Advantage really does provide uh, the opportunity for more prevention, more early intervention, care coordination, disease management, and slowing the progression of disease, uh, which is so important for those living with chronic diseases, whether it's one or many. Um, so we are going, what we can tell you is that we have been in touch with the uh, uh, and following what's happening uh, with both campaigns and trying to um, offer them information, which we've done, uh, and to offer our assistance in, in working through uh, what that means when one of them becomes president of the United States in January. So, uh, but I know that they care about hearing from beneficiaries. So having your voice be a part of um, our conversation uh, with the next administration uh, is extremely important. So I do encourage you to, to stay engaged with, with Better Medicare Alliance, share your stories, ask your questions, and, uh, and to uh, help work with us uh, to be able to be sure your voice is heard here in Washington. Uh, and go on to the next question, yeah. too. I did, but maybe going to ask me my, my next question as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Congresswoman, for that update. We do have time to take another question from the audience. If you have a question, please press zero so you can be connected with one of our screeners, and we'll answer your question live. Okay, so uh, we have a question from Brenda Bunn about uh, what is the difference between an HMO and a PPO? Brenda from yes. North Airport, North Carolina. Okay, yes. Raven says if I can answer that question. So I'm going to give it a whirl and she can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, Oh, she's on the line. I'll ask you a question. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just wanting to know what's the difference between, because they say that I have HMO and every time I go, sometimes when I go to the daughter, they'll say, well, they can't do this or that because I have HMO instead of the PTO. So I just didn't know what would be the difference and should I change to that or can you or okay well that's all the open enrollment about excuse me the next Good. question I was asking about the dental stuff they don't ever have a dental plan or anything through there and that's the first thing that the doctors ask you when you go to the doctor when's the last time you had a dental exam so I don't okay know. Both, both good questions, and uh, and one that is worth exploring, particularly as we have an open enrollment period coming up, is that you can make a change in your Medicare Advantage plan to pick the right one for you. And just briefly, the difference between an HMO and a PPO is, is an HMO tends to have a very defined uh, provider network. That means 
They have a list of doctors that you can go to and hospitals you can go to, and you should be able to ask your Medicare Advantage plan for a list of the hospitals and doctors uh, you can go to. And uh, if none of the doctors you typically go to are on in that network, you, make, you can make two choices. You can either choose another uh, HMO or another plan, uh, Medicare Advantage plan, or you could try one of those doctors and see if you like them just as well. Uh, a PPO is um, short for Preferred Provider Organization, um, and that means they also have a network of doctors and providers and hospitals that they ask you to use, but there is some payment should you go out of, decide to go out of network to a different provider, they will pay something and you will pay something. So uh, that is, um, gives you a little more flexibility, but it does also sometimes mean that you will be paying a bit more when you see the doctor. And that's the difference. But again, during open enrollment is a time when you should ask your current plan for a list of their providers and see if that's acceptable to you. And if not, you should look at some of the other um, Medicare Advantage plans during this open enrollment period, which starts on the, on the 15th and goes through December, to see if there's one that includes the doctors and hospitals that you would prefer to go, or whether you're willing to, um, to pay a bit more, potentially, for a, for a PTO. Uh, second, I'll answer on the dental plan, is that while well, we said men, many plans, many Medicare Advantage plans do offer dental benefit, uh, but some don't. So if yours doesn't and that's important to you, again, you could look to another plan to see which one might provide a dental plan uh, for you uh, without additional cost, because some, some do. Um, and we're very proud of that. We think that it's great that, uh, unlike traditional Medicare, there are dental plans, at least an annual visit uh, to your dentist, and dental care is important. So. Um, by all means, uh, ask that question. If you're the consumer, and what we're trying to do here is to empower you to ask the questions and to know where to go to ask the question. Uh, Ravens later on is going to also tell you about where if your own MA plan doesn't give you this kind of information, where you can go for help uh, to, to look that up. You should have received a booklet in the mail that has all the options in your area, and uh, that, too, can be very helpful to you. Well, actually, sometimes that's too much information. It's hard to sort through. Um, take, take a look and see if that helps you compare uh, your premiums, your out-of-pocket expenses, the benefits you get, so that you pick the right plan uh, for you. And that's one of the um, important things about having these kinds of options and opportunities. Great. Thank you so much, Congresswoman, and thank you so much for asking that very important question. Um, now we're going to go to our second poll question. Again, you can participate by using the keypad on your telephone. The second question is, what is your most important consideration in choosing Medicare Advantage? Press 1 for lower premiums. Press 2 for provider network. Press 3 for enhanced benefits. Press 4 for choice of plan. Again, what is your most important consideration in choosing Medicare Advantage? Press 1 for lower premium. Press 2 for provider network. Press 3 for enhanced benefits. Press 4 for choice of plan. Okay, and as those uh, poll results are coming in, we're going to give you guys an update after we cover the next topic. Okay, so next the Congresswoman is going to talk to you about the threats to Medicare Advantage and why Medicare Advantage needs to be protected. Okay, I'm happy to, uh, to answer that question. Um, and the reason that Better Medicare Alliance exists is because uh, we do believe that Medicare Advantage offers an uh, important option for Medicare beneficiaries. And what that what we try, what we do uh, with that belief uh, is to gather the evidence of how it's working and to communicate that evidence to policymakers. And you might, and you're asking, why do we need to do that? Why do we need to protect Medicare Advantage? After all, there are 18, uh, more than 18 million beneficiaries who have chosen Medicare Advantage. It's, uh, it's a strong and and vital uh, option within Medicare. It's a third of Medicare at this point, um, and so it is a really very important option uh, within Medicare. But, you know, things can change. Politics can be uh, an interesting part of all of this. Uh, we're very fortunate that Medicare Advantage is supported by bipartisan uh, members on both the, in the House and in the Senate. But uh, a couple things can happen. One is 
there's always going to be new legislation in Congress that can, might make some changes. Um, we want to make sure that any changes made for Medicare Advantage are ones that benefit beneficiaries, that strengthen the program, that, that make sure that the option continues, and honestly doesn't pull, uh, pass costs along to beneficiaries. Because um, we know one of the things that matter to you is the affordability of Medicare Advantage. So we monitor this very quick, uh, very frequently. And the other thing that's interesting about Medicare Advantage is by law, every year uh, in the winter, January, February, and March, there is something called the rate notice uh, period, which is part of the regulatory uh, process. And so there's a complex set of regulations that the administration puts out, uh, and we look at it, we analyze it, and then we respond with what we think will be helpful and what we think might be harmful in those regulations in terms from the perspective of providers or beneficiaries or uh, some of the very in important innovation and enhanced benefits that many uh, beneficiaries really value. So what we do then is to use the evidence and the analysis to respond. And again, one of the things that we hear frequently from policymakers, whether they're in the administration or in the White House or on the Hill, uh, is that they want to hear from beneficiaries. So your voices as part of that uh, process is extremely important. Last year we had seniors calling health offices, we had people writing letters to the editor, we had people writing to us about why Medicare Advantage was important to them and why certain changes might be harmful to them. Uh, and we sent those letters on to CMS. And we sent those, helped send those letters to newspapers across the country, and a number of them got printed. And uh, we had many, many people calling Hill offices as well, so that your representatives in Congress and the Senate can also write to CMS and say, my constituents care about this. So we're interested in uh, having you be very much a part of that process where we are not particularly in rate notice, but really all year really communicating with the administration, communicating uh, with, with policymakers the perspective of providers, nurses, and nurse practitioners, and doctors, uh, as well as some of the community partners uh, that are providing some of the extra benefits that you hear about, as well as, of course, beneficiaries. So I hope you will take the time to consider uh, being a, a, an advocate uh, for uh, within uh, Better Medicare Alliance, sign up for that. We will send you more information and, and contact you and email you, and, and you'll email us. And some of you send us wonderful stories that we post on, on Facebook and talk to each other. And we think that that is creating a broader community across the country to show the support and importance of a Medicare Advantage. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. And now we'll take a break to get a poll update from Ottawa. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for participating so far and calling in um, and, and, and letting us know what you think. So um, the poll question for number two was, what is your most important consideration in choosing Medicare Advantage? Uh, lower premiums, provider network, enhanced benefits, or choice of plan? And 46% of you said enhanced benefits. Um, 23% of you said lower premium, and 18% of you said choice of plan, and 13% of you said provider network. Okay, thank you so much for that update, Ajua, and again, thank you all so much for participating in our poll questions. Our last topic for the telephone town hall is about what actions you can take to protect Medicare Advantage. So now that you guys have a better understanding of the threat to Medicare Advantage, thanks to the Congresswoman, we want to share with you some ways you can help protect Medicare Advantage. Better Medicare Alliance wants the voice of seniors to be heard in Washington, D.C. We want you to be able to speak to the value of Medicare Advantage, not only for yourself, but also for the other seniors and people with disabilities who rely on this program. Participation in BMA is free and volunteer-based. There are two ways you can be involved with Better Medicare Alliance. The first way to get involved is to sign up to be a BMA advocate to receive our policy updates, advocacy alerts, and a monthly newsletter. Activities that BMA advocates participate in include answering surveys, signing petitions, and sharing experiences with BMA. 
You can also visit our website to look at a complete list of BMA um, advocate activities called the BMA Advocate Checklist. When you participate in at least five advocacy activities with BMA within a calendar year, um, you become an all-star advocate. These advocates will likely also be recruited to become BMA ambassadors, which brings me to the second way that you can be involved with BMA to protect Medicare Advantage. You can request to join our BMA ambassador, which is a group of the top BMA advocates who volunteer to work directly with BMA staff to further engage in advocacy activities for Medicare Advantage. BMA ambassadors will receive prizes for their activities, including BMA stickers, t-shirts, and tote bags. Some of the BMA ambassador activities include joining our private BMA um, ambassador Facebook group, participating in a monthly conference call to discuss Medicare Advantage policy updates, contacting members of Congress or other policymakers, sharing information in your community about Medicare Advantage, hosting an event like a coffee chat or a workshop or even a fitness class within your community, organizing trips to Washington to advocate for Medicare Advantage on Capitol Hill, and connecting with other advocates nationwide. If you would like to become a BMA ambassador, please email me at community at bettermedicarealliance.org. Again, the email address is community at bettermedicarealliance.org. Also, if you have not yet signed up to be a BMA advocate, please sign up on the BMA Action Center within our website, bettermedicarealliance.org. If you have any questions about becoming an advocate or ambassador, please press zero. Okay, now it's time for our last poll question. Again, you can participate in the poll by using the keypad on your phone. The third question is, which BMA advocacy activity would you be interested in participating in? Press 1 for sending a letter to an editor or member of Congress. Press 2 for completing a BMA survey. Press 3 for signing a BMA petition. Press 4 for participating in BMA events, such as the telephone town hall. Again, which BMA advocacy activity would you be interested in participating in? Press 1 for sending a letter to an editor or member of Congress. Press 2 for completing a BMA survey. Press 3 for signing a BMA petition. Press 4 for participating in BMA events, such as the telephone town hall. Okay. Thank you guys so much for participating in the poll, and we will provide you with an update in just a little bit. Um, now we will start our Q&A segment. So actually, um, just letting you know that we will be giving you a poll update in about a few seconds, so keep answering the poll question. Press 1 if you'd like to send a letter to an editor or 2 to complete a BMA survey, 3 to sign a petition and four to participate in the BMA event. And we'll be taking questions very soon. We know a bunch of you are waiting, and we'll be getting to questions very shortly. Um, so just to let you know, the update for the poll question is that 38% uh, of you say that you would like to complete a BMA survey. 30% of you said that you would like to sign a BMA petition, and 23% of you said that we, you would like to participate in a BMA event, such as a tele-town hall, um, and 10% of you said you would like to send a letter to an editor or a member of Congress. Thank you so much for completing the poll. At this time, we're going to get to a few of your questions. First, we have Diane um, from Maryland Heights, Missouri. Diane? Yes? Hi, we can hear you. Did you <laughs> okay, what I was wondering is I've been in Medicare Part A and B for the last four years. And I'm wondering if I can enroll in an Advantage plan 
between October 15th and December 7th. Thank you so much for your question, Diane. So if you are enrolled in Medicare Parts A and B and have never enrolled in the Medicare Advantage plan before, you may not do so during open enrollment. The period for you to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan will be between April 1st and June 30th. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, we'll now have Heidi Ross from Chandler, Arizona. Heidi is a caregiver. Um, Heidi, we have you live. Oh, hi, thank you. Thanks for doing this. Anything that we can do to get information and awareness out to folks is, is an awesome thing. <laughs> um, I just want to say I do help two elderly relatives, and we actually, I didn't tell you this part, but there was a Medicare scam going on in Scottsdale, Arizona, that we reported to our senior Medicare patrol at our local area agency on aging, and it's already gone to the national level. And Cigna also reported it because they were um, – misrepresenting how Medicare would pay for the um, annual exam, annual wellness exam. So we're really proud that we caught one of the bad guys, maybe. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say is I am a ship counselor. I volunteer now. I've done it in Arizona and Rhode Island. And I went to a training yesterday on 2017 um, uh, plans and what's going on with the websites. And I just want to say a couple quick things. One is there are some Medicare advantages, at least I know in Arizona, that will be going away. So it's really important for people to know that that gives them extra options to choose other plans or to maybe get a, um, into a special enrollment period for a Medicare supplement. I know that's not for everybody, but they need to know their options, especially in areas where there aren't a lot of PPOs or HMOs. Um, and with that, I think it's really important to know that on the back of every Medicare and U book is a SHIP, a State Health Insurance Assistance Program that has unbiased trained people that can help people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you can, so you can call them or your local area agencies on aging. I know we have a lot of volunteers in, in many of the uh, senior centers in Maricopa County. So, And then the last thing was to make sure that we understand that we can go on Medicare.gov, SocialSecurity.gov to do um, get our own logins to find out what's going on with our benefits to help our relatives and friends um, either locally or far, or far away. And, and last thing, on socialsecurity.gov, there's an extra help link. So a lot of people who, um, they're not, they're just above um, certain limits, like for the QI1 program, that's a program that helps with Medicare savings program. They, people might qualify for help with their prescriptions at different levels, and that's on socialsecurity.gov, or your SHIP counselors can help you with that as well. And that can um, open opportunities to change plans, save a lot of money on your prescriptions um, throughout the year. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Heidi, for sharing all of that information. That is great. Um, one of our biggest goals in hosting this telephone town hall was to make sure that people knew about all of their options, not just one, not just two, but of all of the options that are available to them. So thank you so much for sharing those resources. Congresswoman, do you want to add? Yeah, I just want to add uh, that is, uh, you, you actually felt like you read some of our material mm -hmm. that we're gonna, uh, that's going to be posted on our website uh, to remind people that there are sources that are uh, impartial and just will tell you the information, um, have, uh, help you make these choices. And I do think that, um, Heidi, it's just great that you are a counselor because I know that it can be really quite confusing and difficult to sort through all of this information and right, make the right choice um, for yourself and family. And I will also say that many loved ones, adult children, uh, seniors also can, you can ask them for uh, their help as well. And thank you for also um, helping to make sure that uh, whether it's a scam, that that got stopped. So well, we very much value uh, caregivers and the, and the work that you do. Uh, and thank you for that information. And again, if anyone didn't jot down all the great things that you said, uh, that that's also going to be on our website. You can go to bettermedicarealliance.org and uh, go on to our senior page and really look for some of this information, and we'll be posting additional information on the open enrollment process, and many of the things that Raven went through are actually going to be written down and, uh, and available to you in the next few days. Thank you. Great. Do you have another question? So, our next question will be from Craig Johnson of Fort Worth, Texas, who has a question about respite care. Uh, Craig? Yes, I'm available. Um, I was, my question is, is respite care available in any of the, uh, uh, the, the plans? Okay. Oh, oh, 
thanks for that question. We're, we're just um, checking to make sure that I'm, I'm correct about this. I do want to just double check on this. I don't believe that respite care is covered uh, unless you have uh, some additional uh, support. Uh, it's really provided primarily through long-term care and, and support services that you can get respite care, but not through Medicare, uh, which means that Medicare Advantage provides uh, the same benefits uh, as under traditional Medicare. I don't believe either actually pays for respite care, except in particular situations. It's more the exception than the rule, let me put it that way, and it's really done usually through a different, uh, different program, but not through Medicare. Um, and I, I do know if you are either providing uh, care for a loved one or you are that loved one that this is a very important uh, issue uh, for um, for seniors at the age, if they have more medical problems, we hear this. Um, I will say this, that under Medicare Advantage, there is um, particular attention and opportunity for uh, some of the providers to go into uh, a, a beneficiary's home and to uh, help provide some assessment about the uh, environment that, that because that really affects uh, the health of a senior and the ability for a senior to really take uh, take care of themselves and follow the instructions and, uh, and be able to uh, maintain their health. So there's increasing awareness of the importance of family and supports, and, the, um, and there's a lot of discussion here in Washington about how the, uh, Medicare, particularly within Medicare Advantage, it can be more responsive. So we're well aware of these concerns, but I wish I could say yes, it's provided, um, but I can't quite say that yet. But thank you for calling in very much. So at this time, we want to introduce to you guys um, Desiree Means of uh, uh, the Aging and Disability Resource Center. She's uh, from Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, she is her organization um, is an ally of Better Medicare Alliance, and she's also a Shine Project Director. Um, and Shine uh, is the ser serving health insurance needs of elders, and we want to introduce her for a little bit and so you know about what resources are available to you if you have um, complex questions that this town hall wasn't able to get to, and then after she introduces herself, we'll get to a few more questions. Thank you guys for your patience. Desiree? Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. And um, as Adriana said, my name is Desiree Mearns. And I am the Shine Project Director Liaison for Palm Beach and the Treasure Coast, which is a good chunk of South Florida. Um, we are just kind of fine after Hurricane Matthew, by the way. But um, just to throw out there, Shine, Serving Health Insurance Needs of Elders, is the uh, Florida program for SHIP. So we are the state health insurance program that was referred to earlier. And thank you for that volunteer for giving all of that wonderful information you let all of our uh, super secrets out there, and um, so we are the SHIP program for the state of Florida. We do have a lot of different resources through every area agency on aging as we are housed in the area agency on aging here in the state of Florida. So we have a very tight-knit communication and relationship with uh, Medicare Rights, Senior Medicare Patrol, all of the different programs that are really here to advocate on everyone's Medicare just in general. So just to, to put out there that the Area Agency on Aging and the Aging and Disability Resource Centers are great resources for anything and everything that has to do with both Medicare, Medicaid, and the coordination between those two. So, so happy to be here, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Desiree. We're so happy to have you. And just good to know, I think we heard it before, but there are uh, SHIP counselors in, uh, in every state, and again, they may have a, bit of a different name, but uh, it is uh, well worth it. We can help you find out who that is, or you can uh, also find that out in some of the other ways it was talked about before. But don't be, there's one case where don't be afraid to ask questions. Absolutely not. <laughs> so please press, we'll remind you to please press zero if to ask a question. Um, right now, we will have Glenda Davies from Austell, Georgia. Who wants to know how to switch from fee for service to uh, a Medicare Advantage? Glenda, you're live. Um, yes. Earlier, um, uh, one of the participants asked about switching from regular Medicare to uh, Medicare Advantage. And if I'm not mistaken, you said um, 
that she could not uh, participate during the, uh, what is it, October 15th to December 7th? She had to wait until next year. Why is that? So the open enrollment period from October 15th through December 7th is designed for people who receive their Part A and B benefits through Medicare Advantage or they have um, a Medicare Part D plan. If you have not already enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, then the open enrollment period is not for you. The open enrollment period is designed for Medicare Advantage beneficiaries who want to make changes to the plan that they're in. So as someone mentioned earlier, if I have a Medicare Advantage HMO and I want to join a PPO, she would be able to do that during open enrollment because she already has Medicare Advantage. So if you're looking to sign up for the first time, that period would be between April 1st and June 30th. Okay. So we have a question from Facebook uh, that we'd like to get to. Um, Elaine Anke asks, what is better, Medicare Advantage or Medicap? So uh, this is a question from Facebook, so if one of you like to answer. Sure, I'll take, a, um, I'll take a shot at this one, uh, and I think that is a very good question to ask, and many people uh, don't really know which one. There's some information, again, we, we talked about in terms of Medicare Advantage and Medigap, and for those who don't really know uh, what, what you're referring to, Elaine, let me just um, ask the, uh, answer the question in this way. Uh, first of all, Medigap is a supplemental policy that you can buy if you're in traditional Medicare. If you're a Medicare Advantage, you can't buy it, really probably because you don't need to. Um, but if understanding that Part A and Part B, Part B pays for doctor services, provider services, uh, a variety of con kinds of services, um, but it doesn't cover everything. So you can buy an additional insurance policy through a private insurance company um, and get what's called a Medigap or supplemental benefits package that will pay for those physician services. Uh, the, under Medicare Advantage, you, you don't need, you're not, you're not allowed to do that because it's seen as duplicative. So there are real differences in these programs. The question really is, what would serve you best? Is it uh, traditional Medicare? If you can afford a Medigap program to cover those physician services, um, it, that's one option. We actually think that Medicare Advantage offers some very good option in the fact that the way Medicare Advantage is paid, it really does incentivize the plans and the providers to offer care coordination and early intervention and, sub and these uh, enhanced benefits. Um, and really, they're responsible uh, to report quality standards, and so you can find out which is a high star, you know, five star or four star uh, plan, um, and that you also can buy a plan that has is more affordable in the sense of reducing your co-pays and deductibles. Um, or not. So you can really tailor the plan to your own needs. So we really have the dual lane, which is um, sometimes difficult, is just to, to really compare the two options. What can you afford? What, in fact, do you care most about? Uh, do you care most about not having to pay anything when you go to the doctor, but you're willing to pay in, an extra insurance policy to be able to do that? Um, or do you want a plan that actually gets paid a set amount of money per month, member per month, that actually will look out for you over time and provide that kind of patient-centered care coordination that is available, particularly through Medicare Advantage. Uh, so they're different, and the costs may be different for you as well in your, uh, in your area. So um, definitely check them out and see what works best for you and your family. Okay. Now we have a question from Evelyn Johnson of Whitney, Texas. Um, Evelyn would like to know how she can be an advocate in her area to make sure Medicare Advantage plans know um, uh, what improvements can be made. So, Evelyn, you're live. Yes, I'm uh, interested in knowing what I need to do to uh, make that possible. Um, I am I'm very much aware of what's going on in our country, and uh, I, I like to help protect our citizens and uh, work towards helping them to achieve all that they need to. Oh, thank you so very much. That is, of course, very important to the Better Medicare Alliance. And just to clarify, are you currently enrolled in Medicare Advantage? Yes. Okay. All right. 
So the ways that you can be involved as an advocate are the ways that we talked about earlier. So if you would like to sign up with the BMA to be an advocate, you'll receive our policy updates, you'll get advocacy alert, alerts, and you'll also receive a monthly newsletter. So what our staff does is we, we research and we are very much aware of what's being proposed by the administration, and then we do some analysis and send that information on to our seniors so that you guys can be activated to advocate for the Medicare Advantage program. Another way that you can be involved would be to become a BMA ambassador, and those are our most active advocates. Those are our top advocates. And if you would like to be a BMA ambassador, I would love to hear from you. Um, please send me an email at community at bettermedicarealliance.org, and we can talk about some of the programs and things that you would like to do within your particular community. And I will just add that um, Raven would love to hear from you because uh, mm -hmm. this, is, this is her thing uh, and we're excited about that. But it also sounds like you're someone who's willing to talk to some of your neighbors and friends about uh, Medicare Advantage and to talk to them about Medicare and about how we can protect Medicare and Medicare Advantage for the future and get involved and sign up. And we love the idea of someone doing that and, uh, and, and talking to other people, sharing this information. And you can do that on, on Facebook with your friends or neighbors. You can do it on email um, and encourage people to speak up for themselves. Uh, that is the way our democracy works, is to have people be able to talk about what is working, what's important to them, and then encourage policymakers to, uh, to support that. So we'd love to be working with you. Okay. Wonderful. We have a question from Janet McGorty of Milwaukee, Wisconsin who just found out that her Medicare Advantage plan has a five-star rating, um, but that her prescription medication may be getting too expensive. And she wanted to know what could be done about that. Janet, you're on the line. Hi. Um, coincidentally, I just spoke with my um, agent to find out what the changes were for Medicare advantage and actually was very pleased to find out that Medicare Advantage has a five-star rating now and that um, um, my monthly premium will be going down. Um, so I'm very happy about that and I also want to add that with the Silver Sneakers program, with dental, with vision, I do believe that um, Medicare Advantage wants to keep people healthy and well. So that's a kudos. <laughs> and then on the other side, uh, I don't know if everybody understands what I'm saying when I say big pharma. What I mean by that is the drug companies that raise the prices of medications that some people may have to take that are not on the formulary for their plan. And uh, because we're going into the election in less than a month, um, so many people are focused on the presidential, but I think it's also important to find out what your Senate or Assembly people are interested in in lowering the cost or keeping costs down for people who take medications that are either too expensive, um, even with a copay, or um, they're not in the formulary at all, in which case you would have to um, pay full price. So, yeah, we got it. We got it. You're not the only American asking this question, so <laughs> it's a good one. Go ahead, Raven, you wanted to talk about this? Go ahead. Yeah, so thank you so much for your question. Um, I was just thinking about some of the resources and programs that are available to help people who are having difficulties in covering their drug costs. One of those programs is the Extra Help Program, um, and information about that program is available through Medicare.gov. There's also the Pharmaceutical Assistance Program, and information about that is also available through Medicare.gov. I believe each of these programs has income requirements, and they kind of look at your overall budget to decide whether or not you qualify to receive this assistance. But these programs have both been very, very helpful um, to people who 
are struggling to pay for their prescription drug costs. And I would just add, there, there is a good bit of conversation about this, uh, particularly since there's, there, I believe you hear about, what we do about a particular drug that is not covered, uh, and it is, uh, you know, a very high cost. So um, we want access to these uh, important medications, and there's a, a, a bit of conversation, different, different thoughts about how it, we, there might be help in making sure that prescription drugs are more affordable and available. Uh, to everyone. So, and congratulations to you that you picked a five-star uh, MA plan. That's great, and and had good words to say about your experience uh, with your MA plan. So, thank you for for your comments on that. And my guess is that you might be hearing more about, uh, not from us particularly. We actually don't get directly involved in the issue about uh, prescription drug costs, but we do hear from beneficiaries about this, and so we're well aware of the fact that it is a a concern for many uh, beneficiaries under Medicare. So, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating with us. And I just wanted to clarify, um, for the people who are asking whether or not you can um, join a Medicare Advantage plan during open enrollment, I apologize. I misspoke. Um, so you are able to switch from original traditional Medicare to a Medicare Advantage prescription drug program um, during the open enrollment period. Okay, so to the people who um, asked that question earlier, I apologize that I misspoke. You are eligible to enroll in a Medicare Advantage program during the open enrollment period, which begins this Saturday, October 15th. Okay, so we have a question from Joy Cambridge of New York. So Joy from Cambridge, New York, I think. Um, Joy, you're on the line. Uh, thank you. Uh, I am want to make a statement about uh, Medicare Advantage. Uh, my husband and I have had it now for, this will be our third year, and what I like so much about it, it, it covers everything. You deal with one company, you don't have to deal with three different companies to find out of what's going on with your health care. And um, the other thing is they do a lot of preventative uh, care, which is absolutely wonderful as you get older, that they're on top of things before it really gets to be a serious problem. And um, the other thing is that um, it's easy to call and communicate with the company that does have your Medicare Advantage. And looking at different programs over the last three years, is all of them are a touch different, but they all do the two things that I stated, it covers everything with one company, and that makes it easier as you get older so you don't have to deal with this company for the drugs and this company for the doctor and this company, you know, Medicare. It, it covers everything. And I'm very pleased with what, what we have had. And my husband had a catastrophic illness down when we were in Florida, and it was an HMO but they, it was an emergency, and they did beautifully covering everything that needed to be covered. We had some co-pays, but we knew that. You know that going in. Well, Joy, thank you for what you said. I certainly do hope that you um, join us as an advocate uh, for a Medicare Advantage, but your experience is one that is, uh, we hope, very typical of the experience of beneficiaries in Medicare Advantage. It is the whole point. We hear from a lot of beneficiaries that they very much appreciate the simplicity um, of the billing. It is one company. It's not many. You know what your um, co-pays and deductibles are. And something that was just mentioned earlier in this call is that there is also a limit, an annual limit on how much you would have to pay out of pocket, which doesn't exist in fee-for-service uh, and or, traditional Medicare. So it, that's a huge advantage to be able to predict uh, what, if, at least what the maximum might be that you'd have to pay out of pocket, and that's very helpful. But you also mentioned something very important uh, to Better Medicare Alliance as we advocate for Medi Medicare Advantage, which is the prevention, uh, reaching out to beneficiaries so that make sure that they're using health care the way they, um, they should or need to, to not always wait even when they they call the doctor, but to actually reach out to them and say, we haven't heard from you, you have this 
you know, illness that you need to be taken care of, it's chronic condition, uh, we really ought to be uh, helping you out and sometimes making a, a house call or at least a phone call or a letter or something that actually does really engage people. Um, and to hear that you had a really good experience even in a difficult situation with your husband having a, um, a catastrophic medical condition out of state, I'm sure that was a stressful thing for, for both of you, the fact that you knew that you had the insurance coverage, that they were good about that, that, that you had that security, lifts a great deal of stress in a very stressful time. So I'm, I'm very glad that you were willing to share that story. So we have two questions left. First would be a Facebook question uh, from Linda Nelson, and then the last question of the day would be from Diana Green of Middleton, Connecticut. So uh, first, uh, the question from Linda Nelson is, um, sorry, um, I turned 64 end of August this year, and she wanted to know she could start uh, her application for Medicare sooner than three months prior to 65. So, Linda, thank you so much for your question. So, to enroll in Medicare, traditional Medicare, you are eligible to do that three months before you turn 65 the month of your 65th birthday, and then the three months after you turn 65. So unfortunately, you may not begin to start your um, Medicare application before you turn, before the three months before you turn 65, if that makes sense. You can study up about it if you'd like, yeah. but <laughs> don't rush it, you'll be there soon. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, our last question is about to go to Diana Green of Middleton, Connecticut. But before we get to our last question, I want you to know that you can leave a voicemail if we didn't get to your question today. Um, so we're sorry we couldn't get to everybody's question today. And also to repeat that, um, we always encourage you to visit Medicare.gov online uh, so that www.medicare.gov or call 1880-MEDICARE um, if you have additional questions or even uh, try to contact your local area agency, aging organization. Just like we have Desiree with us today, they can be very valuable resources for you in your local area and can even answer questions that are applicable to your region or your neighborhood or your community. So this last question is going to go to Diana Green uh, of Middleton, Connecticut, who has Medicaid and Medicare and says that Medicaid pays her Medicare premium um, and will actually have Desiree answer her question. So, Diana, you're live. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Um, my question really is about whether um, Medicaid will continue to pay the the raised premium, which went from twelve dollars to forty nine dollars. Now, Diane, that is in regards to your Advantage plan, correct? Is that your Advantage plan That's correct. Um, premium? That's correct. Okay. Yes. So now every state is different. So Connecticut is going to be very different from what I'm aware with with our Medicaid funding here in the state of Florida. Ours is very restrictive. So what it is is Medicaid is going to be assisting you with that Part B premium, either that $104.90 or the $121.80. So if there's anything left over after that Part B premium, that premium on your Advantage plan will be your responsibility. So before it may have been $12, however, it may have gone up this next year because the actual premium of your Advantage plan went up. Again, it is very different in every state, so I can't act actually attest to Connecticut, but that is how it works in the state of Florida. I highly suggest calling a local area agency on aging and getting in with a SHIP counselor so then they can go over the actual details in regards to the state of Connecticut. Unfortunately, I, I'm not as well-versed with the, that state's Medicaid as we are here in the state of Florida. But no matter the how, no matter the difference of the Part B premium, either the 104.90 or 121.80, if that Part B premium changes at all, the state Medicaid still covers the Part B premium. 
but it's not necessarily the case in every state that they will cover the actual Advantage plan premium as well. So that's something that I would definitely check into so you can get a very personalized answer on that in regards to the state of Connecticut. Thank you, Desiree. And again, thank you all for joining us this evening and being so attentive. We apologize that we weren't able to get to all of your questions, but if you remain on the line, you can leave us a voice message with your question. Please be sure to state your name, where you're calling from, and the best number for us to call you back on so we can answer your question. Again, I just wanted to clarify that during the open enrollment period, you are eligible to enroll for Medicare Advantage if you have Part A and B. Okay, and also we want to make sure that you visit our website, bettermedicarealliance.org, to view the information that we've shared with you this evening. And also please email me at community at bettermedicarealliance.org to join our BMA ambassador group. Again, our BMA ambassadors are our top advocates who advocate for Medicare Advantage. There are going to be very cool events coming up for you guys to come to Washington, to participate in conference calls with us. So please email me at community at bettermedicarealliance.org to learn more about the BMA ambassadors and to sign up to join us. Thank you so much and have a good night.